One of these surprising situations arises as follows. Silicon oil, a very viscous fluid, is put in a rheometer, a device that consists of two concentric cylinders. We place some colored dye in the oil and start turning the inner cylinder to see what happens. Here we see the described setup. As expected, as we start turning the inner cylinder, the dye seems to mix with the rest of the oil, just like milk and coffee would. But what if we start turning the cylinder the other way around? Surprisingly, the dye droplet comes back to its original position and shape, seemingly unchanged. Let's try to understand this effect. This is a hydrodynamics problem, so we turn to the Navier-Stokes equation, the famous equation that describes the motion of incompressible fluids. It might look daunting at first, but it is really just a complicated way of writing Newton's second law. The part between your brackets on the left hand side is called the total derivative of the velocity. It can be seen as the acceleration. This acceleration multiplied by the density represents the inertial force. The right hand side can be seen as the sum of all the forces. A term for the force resulting from differences in pressure, a term for the viscous forces and a term for the gravitational force acting on the fluid. Generally, we cannot solve this formula. Only in certain specific conditions the equation can be modified and solved exactly. One of these conditions is in the situation of the low Reynolds number. The Reynolds number is a dimensionless number and is defined as the inertial forces divided by the viscous forces. In viscous fluids, such as silicon oil, the viscous forces are very large, so the Reynolds number is very low and thus the Navier-Stokes equation can be simplified. We see that the left-hand side becomes insignificant compared to the right-hand side. This follows from the definition of the Reynolds number. The inertial forces are much smaller than the viscous forces. What remains is called the Stokes flow. Comparing the Navier-Stokes equation to the Stokes equation, we see that something has changed. The temporal symmetry. The Stokes equation only has a second derivative, so changing the sign of t will not change the equation. It is fully symmetric in time. This is why, in the rheometer experiment, we were able to seemingly turn back time and retrieve the original droplet. In the full Navier-Stokes equation, the dependency of the velocity is not as straightforward, and that means the equation is generally not time reversible. This is why you can never unmix milk and coffee by stirring backwards. Since there is time reversibility of the Stokes equation, organisms that move in a way that look the same forward and backward in time will not be able to move at all in a viscous fluid. Let's have a look. We propose an experiment where we let Lucas the dolphin and June the lobster swim in a high and low viscosity fluid. Lucas swims in a way that looks the same forward and backward in time, while June's motion looks different with the direction of time. Lucas performs what is called reciprocal motion, and June performs non-reciprocal motion. First, we let Lucas swim in a container of water. As expected, he reaches the other end of the container with no problems. June has no trouble swimming in the water either. Now we fill the container with glycerol instead of water. Glycerol has a viscosity that is about a thousand times higher than the viscosity of water. This means the Reynolds number will be three orders of magnitude lower than that of water. We enter the regime of the Stokes flow, where the time reversibility will inhibit Lucas from swimming. Here we have weighted Lucas down a bit, so he would remain sufficiently submerged. As expected, his reciprocal motion is not enough to make him swim. Let's see how Lucas the dolphin did. The red line is in water and the grey line is in glycerol. Clearly, Lucas has a very hard time getting through our low Reynolds number fluid. June, on the other hand, moves almost as easily through glycerol as through water. Comparing June and Lucas, we can see June is the clear winner in glycerol. Lucas the dolphin is hardly going anywhere, while June the lobster is making good progress with every stroke. 